Hello, here we have a book. It's called Calculus. It was written by William L. Hart. And in this video, we're going to take a look at this book. So, yeah, Keith, it says, Calculus. William L. Hart, Professor of Mathematics, University of Minnesota, D.C. Heath and Company, Boston. Just, just a nice, nice, elegant book. Um, I don't know if this came with a dust jacket. This is just the copy I have. A uh, dust jacket is like a cover that goes over the book. Let's, let's check the copyright on this, see how old this is. Here we go. Wow, 19, probably did. Copyright 1955. Oh, I can smell it from here. I, I just got to give it a whiff. Just, ah, uh, incredible, incredible. This is just like a piece of history. Let's read what it says here. This text provides a basis for a first course in calculus for students having a foundation in analytic geometry. The complete book is designed for a substantial course taught five hours per week for two semesters. Wow, okay. So like Calc 1 and Calc 2 basically. Uh, that would be the equivalent uh, of that today. Like today, that's what you would do, right? Um, you know, typically those are five credits here at many schools, uh, on schools in the U.S. that are on the credit system. Um, some schools are on, on uh, are on, uh, are on different systems, but yeah, and here you can see the topics, rates of change, limits, the derivative, differentiation of algebraic functions, role in infinity of infinity and limits, applications of derivatives, we have the angle between two lines, okay, tangent and normal, Maxima and minima. Let's let's let's, let's going to go look at that in a minute. So page sixty-five. I want to take a look at that differentials and parametric formula. Well, looks fun too. But let's take a look at page uh, sixty-five. Well, that's what I kind of want to do. And let me just show you some of the other topics. I'll just there's a lot of them, so I'll just let you look at them. But this is a, an interesting book. It's got a lot of mathematics in it. It's an older book. Um, it's probably really inexpensive. I, I don't know if it's rare or anything. I just uh, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not. I'll, I'll try to leave a link in the description so you can get a copy of this book if you want. Um, as a collector, it's just, you know, I try to have lots of interesting books. So it's got, as you can see, it's got a lot of mathematics. Okay, a lot of math, triple integrals, moments, differential equations. I mean, it's got a lot. And it has answers to exercises. Let's check that out, page 597. And here it tells you that uh, answers to odd numbered problems are given here. Answers to even numbered problems are furnished in a separate pamphlet when ordered by the instructor. Yeah, so I actually have a book. Sorry, I gotta give this a whiff. Ah, it's, it's a book on uh, advanced calculus and it's from the 60s and I have the instructor solutions manual. It's like a little, it is like a little pamphlet and some of the solutions are even handwritten. So it's kind of crazy. So page 65, I just wanted to take a look at some mathematics. All right, let's look at some applications of derivatives. Um, I, just, I just, I don't know, just something to look at. Kind of interested in this right now. Let's just read this and see what it says. Angles between two lines. Okay, so however, hereafter in any discussion involving an angle between two lines in an XY coordinate plane, it will be assumed that the units of length on the axes are the same. Then for every line in the plane, we have defined an inclination alpha any non-vertical line has a slope m, where m equals tangent of alpha. Okay, so that's going to be um, the slope. Okay, it's going to be the slope. Um, and you, know, you can think of the slope as rise over run. We shall use the following results from analytic geometry. So like sine over cosine is the same thing as tangent, right? So if two lines, L1 and L2, have the slopes m1 and m2, it's really m sub 1 and m sub 2, I just say m1 and m2, respectively, and if theta is the smallest non-negative angle formed by L sub 1 and L sub 2, thus theta is between 0 and 90 degrees inclusive, then theta is equal to 90 degrees if and only if the product is equal to negative 1, right? Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Yeah, it means they're orthogonal, right? So they're orthogonal. Um, the, the lines are orthogonal when the product of their slopes is equal to negative 1. That's basically what it's saying there um, in, some sense, in, in, one, in one sense, right? So if we refer to the angle formed by or between two lines, L sub 1 and L sub 2, we shall mean the smallest non-negative angle theta of theorem 1. Here it talks about um, 
tangent and normal. Let's take a look at this. This is just interesting. Let's just read through this. On the graph of an equation, uh, here we have this equation, h of x, y equals zero. At any point p, x naught, y naught, uh, where dy dx, where dx dy exists, the graph has a tangent pt, as in figure 36, page 66. Okay, and then here it talks about the normal one. Let's take a look here so I see. That's what they're doing here. So there's just a little bit of geometry here. So you've got like a normal line and a tangent line basically um, to a curve. So that's basically what you're seeing here, right? You've got a tangent line and a normal line. And you can, you can come up with formulas for those. There's formulas um, that you can use to come up for those. So yeah, and here we talked about maxima and minima. Let's take a look at this. And in Calc 3, you, you, if you study Calculus 3, and it's, I'm sure it's in this book too. Um, let's just look really quick since we're on the topic of normal lines. So let's just, so let's go to the index, right? <clears throat> I mean, I can probably look in the contents too, but let's look for like um, normal, normal line for a plane curve for a surface. You guys do it for a surface, normal plane, four, 496, 491, 496, 491. So let's take a look at that. Next, here we go. <clears throat> Tangent line and normal plane, right, for a space curve. Yeah, so this is something that you do um, in a Calc 3 course, okay? So uh, let C be a regular curve defined by, and you have these, these parametric equations, x equals f of t, uh, uh, that's what they're called. And t is called the parameter, by the way. y equals g of t, and z equals h of t. And one, um, so let, let p, uh, x not y not z not be a, you know a, an ordered triple, and this point here q be another point. Okay, you have two points be obtained uh, when t equals t naught uh, and t equals t naught plus delta t respectively. Okay, all right. Then we shall prove that at p there is a tangent line p t, which has the direction numbers tangent at p direction numbers. Okay, cool. And then here's. Here's a, a picture. This is really cool how they did this in these old books, right? And here we have some equations, by the way. Look at these equations. Summary. At x not y not z not on a rectangular curve with parameter t, the tangent line has the equations. Uh, these are called uh, symmetric equations. Okay, these are called symmetric equations. Uh, and then the normal plane has this equation here. Cool. Yeah. And so they give, here's, here's an actual example. Obtain the tangent line of normal plane where theta equals 1 fourth times pi, so pi over 4, on the helix. So this is pretty easy. So let's see. Uh, they find x, y, and z. Right? They just plug in theta into, into this here. Okay. So like they'll plug in theta here into cosine, so you get cosine of pi over 4 which is the square root of two over two. So you should get three times square root of two over two. Yep, check. Uh, same thing here, uh, sine of pi over four, square root of two over two, so you should get the same thing, yep. And then here you're just gonna get two times pi over four, so it should be pi over two. Yep, one half pi, so all is good. Then we take the derivatives, dx d theta. Uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That's why, you, that's why you have a negative here, so it's negative three cosine. Here you're gonna get three cosine theta, check. And here the derivative of two theta is just two, so that checks. And then, um, and then here it says, from two, uh, direction numbers for the tangent line where theta equals pi over four r. So they're talking about this. This is, where is it here? Two. Oh, not, no, from here, sorry, sorry. They're coming from here. These are the direction numbers, right? <clears throat> so basically they're, they're taking, um, they're, they're taking uh, this, okay, and they're plugging in uh, pi over 4. So you'll get negative 3 times uh, square root of 2 over 2, and that's what we have up here, okay, here. And then if you plug in uh, pi over 4 here, you'll get uh, 3 times square root of 2 over 2, okay. And if you plug it in here, um, <clears throat> sorry, in here, yeah, in here you're just going to get two, so it's the same. So no, nothing happens. Okay, nothing happens. And what you can do uh, when you get those direction numbers, which are here, 
is you're allowed to, I mean, you're allowed to multiply them all by a factor of something. So like here, notice I say or, because they basically multiplied everything by two. You can do that, okay, you can do that. Uh, and then here are the equations for the tangent line. These are, the, again, these are the symmetric equations. This comes from, this comes from here. It's actually easier if I were to show you with the pencils. So, but yeah, uh, the, you know, the book does explain it. And if you've had calculus three, uh, you know, it makes maybe a little bit more sense, but and then they find the normal plane here, et cetera. So kind of cool, kind of a cool book. Here's the normal line and tangent plane to a surface. So it's got a lot of, this is multivariable calc here. This is calc three stuff. Oh, exact differential equations. Let's look at this. A differential equation of the first order and first degree is called exact if and only if uh, this is an exact differential. Hence, a necessary and sufficient condition for one to be exact is that uh, piece of uh, the partial of p with respect to y is equal to the partial of q with respect to x. And they go through some stuff here. So, yeah, you study those in, uh, in differential equations. So, pretty good book. Um, uh, I'll try to leave a link in the description. By the way, if you want to learn math, I have calculus courses on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathbits.com. I have several. They're all, they're all good. Um, I mean, they're all pretty good. The main ones are the best ones, like Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3. And I've got multiple versions of those, and they're, they're both good. Um, yeah, if you get them, just use my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on Udemy, uh, which is a reputable place to have courses. Like, it's legit. Uh, but if you get them, just uh, go through my website, freemathvids.com or mathsorcerer.com, because... It helps me a lot, and I lowered the price to the bare minimum, so you should get a low price. So yeah, hopefully it's been helpful, and I'll try to leave a link uh, in the description of the video to, to the, of this book. I think it's going to be inexpensive. I think I, that's what I think about this one. I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but yeah. I feel hopeful about it. I think there's a lot of copies, but I don't know. We'll see. Take care.